The latest discovered particle of the standard model is the Higgs boson, which does not mediate a force, but is related to the Higgs field. As we understand it, the Higgs field is the mechanism for particles to acquire mass, as we've discussed in class. The graviton is a proposed particle that has not yet been detected. Um, experiments are underway to find it, but it is proving elusive. So it is not really part of the standard model at this time, since it hasn't been detected. So nucleons, again, remembering that nucleons are those protons and neutrons that make up the nucleus of atoms. Nucleons are all made up of three quarks. It turns out that quarks by themselves cannot be observed because the strong force that holds them together becomes larger as the quarks get pulled farther apart, acting sort of like a spring. In the standard model, the strong force is transmitted by exchange of gluons. So a nucleon is a group of three quarks. As I've said a few times, the proton is made up of two up quarks and one down quark, two positive two-thirds up quarks and one negative one-third down quark. And the neutron is made up of one positive two-thirds up quark and two negative one-third down quark. So an antiparticle of a nucleon is a group of three antiquarks. So the proton, two up and two down, I mean, gosh, two up and one down, has an antiproton, antiparticle colleague that's made up of two anti-up quarks and one anti-down quark. The two anti-up quarks have negative two-thirds charge each, and the one anti-down quark has a positive one-third charge. And so the antiproton ends up with a negative one unit of charge, whereas the proton has a positive one unit of charge. And an antiproton has already been Many antiprotons have been created um, at CERN in the antimatter factory. So particles annihilate. When a particle and its corresponding antiparticle meet, they annihilate each other, self-annihilate, and the mass of those two particles becomes transformed into radiant energy um, according to e equals mc squared, where m is the mass of the particle and antiparticle and c is the speed of light in a vacuum, about 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. An example would be an electron and a positron, aka an electron and an anti-electron, collide, self-annihilate, and produce some gamma rays. The energy equivalent of the electron-positron pair at rest is 1.02 mega electron volts. Again, we are using a bizarre unit of um, or bizarre to us unit of energy of mega electron volts of electron volts because these individual particles have very small amounts of energy as measured in joules. <clears throat> so when an electron and positron at rest annihilate each other, the sum of the energies of the gamma rays emitted must be equal to the mass energy of the pair of electron positron. If the electron and positron are moving when they encounter each other, they have extra energy that must also be transformed into gamma rays. And so the gamma rays that are produced by particle annihilation tend to be larger than the rest energy of the particles. We can talk more about that in class. So pair production, this is the weird part, right? If you can have a particle antiparticle touch and annihilate, by gosh, if you have gamma rays with enough energy hanging out together, a particle antiparticle pair can spontaneously be transformed from that energy. And we call that pair production. So if a gamma ray with at least 1.02 megavolts of energy passes by a nucleus, a positron electron pair can be produced. If the gamma ray's energy is larger than 1.02 megavolts, then the excess energy goes into kinetic energy of the positron and electron. So there are rules to this, right? There are rules to annihilation and production of particles. Here are the rules. And the rules are described in quantum mechanics. So the total number of quarks and the total number of leptons in the universe is constant. Quarks and leptons aren't created or destroyed in these particle-antiparticle pairs. Force carriers such as gravitons, photons, gluons, weak bosons can be created or destroyed if there's enough energy. Individual reactions, say a gamma ray turning into a single electron or a gamma ray turning into a single positron do not, cannot occur because such events would violate the law of conservation of charge. And